Hello and welcome to this snip where I'll show you how to create an Azure SQL database with PowerShell. To help you understand the relationship of objects pertaining to the Azure SQL database service, here's a simple diagram. Your Microsoft Azure subscription is a top level entity that's essentially a billing boundary. Next, you create a resource group, which is simply a management container for all types of resources in Microsoft Azure. Then you'll provision a SQL server, which is a globally unique name. We have chosen SNP SQL. We need to also create a username and password for high level administration. The SQL server that you create in Microsoft Azure is not an infrastructure virtual machine that you can manage yourself. Next, after that, we'll create a database called DemoDB and provision access via a firewall rule. So let's get started. We have prerequisites that we need. So you need the Azure Resource Manager PowerShell module and Azure subscription. And also you can look at this uh, later on is the pricing and overview of the Azure SQL database service. This will give you an idea around about performance and the various tiers that you can choose from. So our first step, we'll create a resource group and you'll see that's succeeded and the location is North Europe. So our next step is to actually establish a set of credentials. Uh, these will be used uh, so that we can authenticate with the server and the database. So our username is SQL admin and storing that in a secure string. So our parameters, we are actually storing in a hash table. Um, this is called splatting. Um, if you're interested in this, you can look at how to use parameter splatting in PowerShell TechSnip. If we go through the parameters, we've got the resource group name that we defined. We've got our server name, which is SNP SQL, the location, which is North Europe. Then we pass in the credentials that we've set up, and then we get to the version number. So this is version 12. There are two options, 11 and 12. They're fairly abstract numbers, though version 12 is currently what is being updated and has many of the features that will be included in SQL 2016. So let's go ahead and run this. And now you'll see that the server has been created with version 12 and we've got our fully qualified domain name, which we'll use to connect to the server. So we'll just take a copy of that, snip SQL database windows net. Now the database server is actually created, we can go ahead and create a database. For this, we use new Azure RM SQL database. Again, we define the resource group name, the server name, this time the database name, which is DemoDB, and quite an important parameter, the requested service objective name. This relates to the pricing and performance tier. The URL at the top of the screen. So let's go ahead and run this to create the database. Okay, so that's our database now created from the information that's output, and you'll see current service objective name S0, which is the tier we chose and the creation date. We also get the resource ID, which gives subscription details in there as well. Now that's created, we can move on to try and access the database. To do that, we need to create a firewall rule to allow inbound access. By default, when the database and when the server's created, there is no access at that point. We need to create a rule. So we use the command new dash Azure RM SQL Server Firewall Rule. The parameters, again, we use our resource group name, our server name, firewall rule name is allowed IPs, our start IP address and our end IP address. So let's just run that command. And there the output is basically telling us that we have a start and end IP and that particular IP will be allowed. So to prove connectivity, we'll use SQL Server Management Studio to connect. So our server name, which is SNP SQL. So we'll paste that in. We'll select SQL Server Authentication. Our login is SQL Admin. Then we'll type in the password. 
and then we'll click connect. And there is the database we created.